Let's go back. We're going to talk more about um, Jim Gavin's legacy. And I'm delighted to say we've got Stephen Rochford with us this morning to talk to us about what it's actually like to be on a sideline against the Dubs team in their pomp. Um, Stephen, first off, were you surprised when you heard the news on Saturday afternoon? Yeah, I was. Um, didn't didn't see it coming, at, uh, I suppose, at, at this stage after the after the All-Ireland final replay. Um, yeah, really surprised. Um but at the same time, you know, when, when you're probably weighing things up, like, you know, no better time to go when, um, you know, you've just written the, the probably the biggest chapter in Gaelic football history. What was it actually like preparing for the challenge of going up against Jim Gavin's Dublin? Um, I suppose, like, you know, I, I, in with respect to Jim, it, it, it probably wasn't the case of, of, of sort of tightening that Jim Gavin's Dublin. It's just the, 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 the team he has actually built and... and I suppose sort of thinking about things over the the, the, the last two days, sort of since the, since the news broke. It's I think that one of the, the the key strengths to Jim wasn't just the team that he that, that he had on the field, but the, the the team that he put around him. I think that's that's the the, the probably the, the the strength of any great leader is the, is the support people that he put around them, um, and and that just I suppose you know we we heard a number of years ago uh, how he brought in Mark Ingle on the basketball phone pop probably, um, you know, probably one of the first to, to, to do that, probably at an county level and for a team that were so well equipped and maybe had two, maybe three All-Ireland sort of under their belt. They went and looked to, 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 to other sports to, to, to get answers. And the way they developed the, the team and probably Keno Sullivan's role after the 2014 um, final, um, they just or semi-final, it just showed you their, their ability to, to, to evolve and and take the game to, to, to the next level. Um, and, and, and in preparing for, for, for to take on the, that Dublin team, he knew you just had to empty your tank for for, for that game and um, and hope that it, that it was enough. And uh, unfortunately, for, for in the Mayo context and, and any other one, that hasn't been enough over the last five years. Whenever you were going up against them, and you know, I don't mean kind of just for that match, but at the start of a season, was that the dominant narrative in your head? I need to prepare a team that's going to end up being capable of beating Dublin, that I know you've got to play every game, take each game with its merits, if you will, but I, at the same time, they were the dominant force, so you kind of are always measuring yourself, like what are they doing, why are they going to a basketball coach, why have they moved a cornerback slash midfielder into the, the six that holds his area? Yeah, I, like, I, I think, you know, with, with, when you're probably talking as a, as a management and you're setting your objectives and goals, um, and then, obviously, with, with, with the wider um, group, including the players, you're, you're, I suppose there is that there is that item of you know you've got to beat Dublin to win the All Ireland, um, and you know that there's that they have been as, as you said the dominant force. So like you know when people are, are 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 talking about winning the World Cup, they're talking about beating the All Blacks, and and you know that's the they've been the standard bearer, um, and and. You know, in that you know that you know when you're you're probably looking at well, we need a corner back here, or we need a, you know a, somebody a full forward. You are thinking well, who can who can hold Paul Mannion a bit, or who can do a job, you know, to sort of you know on Philly, or who could be a handful for them, you know. So so it it, it has it has been a, a, an element of of them being the measuring stick, and uh, even from a, a November December time um, as you as you as you plan into a new season. And when they went and got a basketball coach, are you all like, ah, geez, that's a good idea? Is that is it that kind of stuff that you're thinking? Yeah, okay, they're already iterating for next season. We need to do our own development and our own kind of left field thinking. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I, you're you're probably first thing is you're probably curious around, you know, what is what's that going to bring? What's a what, what's a, a five on five? Um, you know, whatever you know, 25, 30 metre court going to bring to a Gaelic football field initially. And, you know, I think in their in their style of play over the last number of years, you've seen it's, it's bought many, many things. Um, you know, probably the most identifiable thing is their ability to, to, to screen. Um, but, you know, it's also helped them in their tackling, their, in their movement. Um, so, you know, they've always been, you know, they've, they've been able to sort of, certainly think ahead and, and, and again they've had such quality players to be able to adapt to that as well and obviously the likes of Jason Sherlock and um, you know Declan Darcy and Paul Clark and these guys have, have also brought you know great insight um, and, and obviously technical ability to, to, to match with those outside influences. 
Do you think uh, Jim Gavin has now laid foundations so solid that no matter what manager comes in and no matter what they do, they will still be a, an extremely dominant force in getting football for the next half a decade? Do you think it is that well embedded now in Dublin? I, I, it, I think it, it probably is um, insofar as, you know, I, I, I would expect that someone like Brian Cullen would be consistent. Um, you know, he, he's an employee of Dublin GA more than just the senior team, even though I'm sure that, that has a has a large part to play with his um, in 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 his in his role. So I think that you you will continue to see a consistent um, uh, group or or, or or a couple of key people remain probably with the, the management. I, I maybe think people like the, the nutrition and um, you know medical team. Obviously Brian Cullen. I think there'll be those elements. So um, certainly you know Jim. I think built on the foundations that. Um, that, that Pat Gilroy uh, laid, and, and certainly they've built that that high. It's um, it's into nearly a, a skyscraper type of uh, uh, analogy now that, that 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 they're building on, and you know comes that so will come that you know expectation as well for a new manager uh, if 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 it sort of plays out to be someone like Desi Farrell, um, you know going in as a as a senior inter county manager, um, you know that level of expectation. Um, He'll, he'll, he'll know about that from, from, you know, from as soon as the National League starts. Yeah, is there something as well about the style of play that Jim Gavin espoused that is actually going to be the thing that in 10 years' time we all remember? Yeah, well, I think, you know, the, their, their, their style of play is probably more around um, their, 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 their ability to, to just win games whatever way it takes. I know, I know that, you know, if you, you probably look at the, you know, 20... Uh, 13, 2014, sort of that uh, swashbuckling uh, ability to, 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 to um, you know, score uh, very open. But I think in the Donegal game, they, 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 there was a realisation then around being very secure at the back um, whilst, whilst it not, I suppose, put the stranglehold on, on, on the quality players. Um, and so as they've, as they've moved on, they can they can take on an arm wrestle, um, you know you saw that in the in, in the Tyrone uh, 2017 uh, All Ireland semi final, or they can play that very open, fast running game, kicking game, um, and the, it's their ability to be able to read the scenario within seconds of of, of it being presented that they're able to adapt and just shows the the quality of football they have, but but the I suppose level of detail that that that, that they practice uh, and they've been coached, um, you know throughout the last number of years. Yeah, and then the, the last thing I just wanted to ask you about was the nervousness in key moments where, you know, Mayo would have them on the rack or Kerry would have them on the rack or there would just be a, a, a minute in the game, somebody would get sent off and there was never any sense of panic. There was always a sense watching them at the games that Dublin are going to be able to manufacture a chance here and when it comes down to it, it's going to come down to that individual whether or not they, they take it or not and invariably those individuals did take those chances. Yeah, like... Look, they, they they they've had a lot of big characters in their dressing room, um, and and obviously then out onto the field that they, they've been able to take key moments by the scuff of the neck. And you know, I think, you know, while, while my own experience in 2016 and 17, you know, um, is obvious around, you know, Conor Costello came off the bench, and I think that was, you know, a, a key thing around uh, 15, 16, 17. Their, their impact on the bench possibly not as much in in 18 and 19, but Going back to sort of the, the the element of where this team came from, it was it was the likes of the Stephen Cluxton to taking uh, you know that that free in 2011 uh, and and nailing it in a, in a key pressure moment. James McCarthy in in, in 2017 um, when, when we got the two points ahead, you know he, he he got that important score down down on the the Hogan into the canal end and and Jim McConley likewise in 2017 uh, and big scores again. You know, out of the likes of Dean Rock uh, in this year's All Ireland drawing game, so they've 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 been able to, you know, deliver, um, you know, in, in those sort of clutch moments, um, and and there hasn't been any one player, and I think that's 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 a difficulty for 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 all opponents is that when you think you're you're, you're tying down one or two, the reality is that they're they're up into double figures as regards the quality of players and and the and real experience, winning experience, um, has. Has, has assisted them, and I'm sure that that's something that they, that that sort of coolness that that Jim has from 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 his days uh, in military service 
bring in that sort of cool, calculated um, uh, sort of composure to, to, to making uh, those, those key decisions under pressure um, you know, has, has, has obviously assisted them and, 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 has, and, and they've reaped the rewards of it. Yeah, no doubt. Stephen, thanks a million for joining us this morning. Thanks, Les. Stephen Rochford giving us some thoughts there on the uh, end of the Jim Gavin era.